A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter thirteen, verses twenty-one to thirty-three and thirty-six to thirty-eight. Passage taken from the Message version of the Bible. After he said these things, Jesus became visibly upset, and then he told them why. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked around at one another, wondering who on earth he was talking about. One of the disciples, the one Jesus loved dearly, was reclining against him, his head on his shoulder. Peter motioned to him to ask who Jesus might be talking about. So, being the closest, he said, "Master, who?" Jesus said. The one to whom I give this crust of bread after I've dipped it. Then he dipped the crust and gave it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. As soon as the bread was in his hand, Satan entered into him. What you must do, said Jesus, do, do it and get it over with. No one around the supper table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas was the treasurer, Jesus was telling him to buy what they needed for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Judas, with a piece of bread, left. It was night. When he had left, Jesus said, "Now the Son of Man is seen for who he is, and God seen for who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him." God's glory will be on display. In glorifying Him, He Himself is glorified. Glory all around. Children, I am with you for only a short time longer. You are going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the Jews, I'm telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. Simon Peter asked, Master. Just where are you going? Jesus answered, "You can't now follow me where I'm going. You will follow later." Master said, "Peter, why can't I follow now? I'll lay down my life for you." Really, you'll lay down your life for me? The truth is that before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflections on the Gospel according to John, chapter thirteen, verses twenty-one to thirty-three, and thirty-six to thirty-eight. The first thing I hear in today's Gospel is that voice that is sometimes heard so much among children: "I didn't do it." The disciples of Jesus react like children to the statement of the Master: "One of you is going to hand me over." They all wanted to look good, to look like good children who had not broken a plate in their life. But reality is not always how we like it to be. Who has not broken a plate or many plates in his life? Who can say that he is pure and good, and that all his works are upright, and that he has never acted out of selfishness? And that his intentions are always good. Look at the behavior of the disciples in the Gospels. Had they always been faithful? Were their reasons for following Jesus clear? Some preachers had commented, Peter was delighted that he had left everything to follow Jesus, but in reality, perhaps he had left only a few nets mended a thousand times. And a boat that leaked everywhere. They had intentions of obtaining important positions in the kingdom that Jesus would establish. Remember the story of the sons of Zebedee, who wanted the left and right seats beside Jesus. And now let us move from the apostles and let us come to ourselves. Are we pure and good? Have we nothing to be ashamed of? Have we done everything right? And although we have done good things, 
has there not been some spurious intention in our hearts that has stained the good work that we have done let us be realistic honestly we cannot say that i didn't do it in the end what is the difference between the greatest traitor and us the difference may be in quantity but not in quality it would help us to be better to begin by acknowledging our own limitations and miseries we are no different from those whom we regard as bad we are all in need of mercy forgiveness and understanding judas is no worse than us and by blaming him we don't make ourselves any different from others there are two betrayers in today's reading judas and the other is peter he was too proud of his credentials i would never betray you sometimes we behave like these disciples we are so sure of our righteousness i have come across voices which said i wouldn't allow this person to serve in the church for he has a bad reputation really what makes you worthier or more meritorious than the other person to serve god and his church our only credential shall be our reliance on god's mercy